Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss a unique problem on VLSI low power design. So the problem is based on clock gating technique of dynamic power optimization. So friends, before we start, I have a small request. If you have not subscribed my channel so far, please do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload a new video. So now without wasting much time, let's get started. So friends here we are given a small circuit of D flip flop and as you can see here in the waveform the clock is always enabled for this D flip flop even when there is no new data available. So if you can see here in this waveform the, the data is the input data to the flip flop is basically constant during this time and as well as during this time. But the clock is toggling even during this time as well. So the clock is always toggling and it results in increased switching power. Also, we may call it dynamic power. So the question here is modify the above circuit such that the switching power can be minimized when there is no new data available. So whenever the input data is constant here and it is not toggling, we have to make sure that there is no switching happening for this flip flop. That means the clock signal which is getting applied to the flip flop should not toggle. That will result in the switching activity reduction of this flip flop and hence it will reduce the dynamic power. So friends the important point here is we are not given any extra enable signal to get the clock. So we are only given this clock signal and this input data signal and we do not have any enable signal so that we can make use of that enable signal and we can get this clock signal. So friends, you can pause this video for some time here and you can think of any kind of solution. If you are able to find any solutions, please write down in the comment section and I will explain the solution in the next slides. So friends, if we modify this circuit as shown here, it is possible that we can get the clock signal which is going to the flip flop and ultimately we can save the dynamic power. So the concept here is whenever there is no data toggling that means the input of the flip flop and the output of the flip flop are same. So if you see here in the waveform during this time the input data of the flip flop is 1 and what will be the output? The output is basically also be 1 because the input is 1 and uh, at this clock age if it is a positive edge triggered flip flop at this age the flip flop will propagate the input data to the output and hence the output will also become 1 and at this point also the flip flop output is 1. That means whenever the flip flop input and output data is same there is no in, no data available at the input of the flip flop and whenever there is a difference in the input data to the flip flop and the output data of flip flop that means the input data has changed and it got a new value. So friends. If we use a XOR gate here and the input of the XOR gates are input signal of the flip flop and the output signal of the flip flop. So whenever there is a new data available which is different than the previous data that means this XOR output is going to be 1 and this output of XOR gate we can use as a enable signal and that enable signal basically we can pass to the clock gator circuit and we can generate a gated clock which will get further applied to the flip flop. So friend, this is the solution when there is no extra enable signal available for us to get a clock signal. Now let's see the HDL implementation of these two original and modified circuits. So if you see the original, if, if, if we describe the original signal in HDL, then how it will look like at every positive edge of the clock signal, the output of the flip flop will have the input data. So this is the description, very low SDL description of the original circuit. Now when we modify this original circuit and when we generate a new enable signal and the, our enable signal here will be nothing but the actual operation between output of the flip flop and input of the flip flop. That means whenever there is a change in input and output of the flip flop that means there is a new data available at, at the input. So now we will instantiate a clock getter circuit. The clock getter circuit, you can assume any of the any kind of the clock getting circuit as we discussed in one of our, our previous chapter where 
the glow getter can be an end gate based glow getter or an core gate based glow getter or a latch based glow getter so here we have a clock gator circuit instance so the input clock signal to the clock gator is this clock signal and the enable signal is this enable signal which we derived here and then we have the gated output clock so now our flip flop is basically using the gated output clock from the clock gator so we can say that at every positive edge of clock gated gated clock our flip flop output will get the no input data so if you see the difference between this code and this code so here the always block is in original ports it's sensitive to the clock signal but in the modified the always block is sensitive to the gated clock signal and this gated clock signal is basically we are generating based on this enable signal and this enable signal is nothing but it is telling us that there is a new data available at the input of the flip flop and that data has to be passed through the flip flop so friends i hope the modified circuit or how we can modify the original circuit in order to have in, in order to minimize the dynamic power it's clear if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section and i would try to respond you as soon as possible now friends let's see some trade off of the solution so if you see here this is our original circuit and to minimize the dynamic power we have modified this circuit like this that means there is extra hardware we are introducing in the original circuit and this extra hardware is basically going to increase the area of our design so the first trade off is increased area now friends the second is power consumption so if you see here the objective of this problem was to reduce the power and we are able to reduce the dynamic power by getting the clock signal but because of the extra hardware introduced there will be extra components of leakage power or even dynamic power because this clock gator circuit is also switching based on the enable signal and clock signal so even though we are able to reduce a significant portion of the dynamic power but but still some little more power consumption will be added because of the extra hardware addition in the modified circuit so suppose in due to due to the dynamic power reductions we are able to minimize our dynamic power up to 100 units but because of this additional hardware there will be some extra two units power the circuit will be consuming so ultimately we will be able to save 98 units of power so that is also a significant amount of power we are able to reduce here so with the extra cost of hardware which we have introduced here still we we will be able to optimize the dynamic power of this circuit significantly third important trade off is timing so because of the extra logic added between the data and the enable signal and also in the clock path signal if the change if the data arrives late and then the data has to basically enable the clock signal if the data data toggling happens near the active edge of the clock gated signal then the flip flop might go into meta stable state so again we have to make sure that there are no timing violation introduced because of this extra hardware so these are the trade off with this solution so i hope each and every point of this video is clear if you like this video please hit the like button and also do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as i upload a new video Thank you very much.